So today I have good news. We got extremely lucky because the whiteboard was already filled with some data and we will leverage this information. So what it says here is algorithm Lucezer metodo substitutsi, which is a type of an encryption algorithm known as a shift cipher, which could also be referred to as a substitution cipher. And here is what, what this is about. If you have a piece of text, let's say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X, Y, Z, whatever, this is the input, and every character in the input <coughs> is mapped to a certain output. And it's called the shift cipher because if you shift it alphabetically in one direction or another, for example, if the shift uh, value is two, then A becomes one, two, it becomes C, a B becomes one, two, a D, etc. So the string salut becomes, so if you shift S, ah, uh, it's not there. So if you shift A one, two, three times, it becomes a D. So if you shift right three times, this is your input, and this is your output. This is the original text. Three, in this case, is the secret key using which you produce the encrypted output. And of course, using the same secret and the encrypted output, if you shift it back three times, you get this original text. So this is a very simple example of a shift cipher. It's also known as Caesar's cipher. So that's what someone else did on this whiteboard before we got here. Your assignment will be to do something else, which is called frequency analysis. Did anyone hear about this concept? Okay, one person, two people, three, so around 4.35 people heard about it. Then it means that the rest of us will have to hear about it anyway, one more time. So frequency analysis is one approach that you can use to break shift ciphers. And the concept is really simple. In any language, if you write text using words from the dictionaries that uh, tell us what that language is made of, you begin to notice certain patterns, such as the fact that, for example, in English, there is one letter that is the most frequently used statistically. Which letter do you think it is? Yeah, you probably looked it up in some table. <coughs> anyway, the most frequently used letter in English is E. The second one is T, followed by maybe it's A, and, and so on. There is this entire research thread in, in our civilization where people study languages and they build uh, letter distribution tables for each language. For example, uh, the percentage for E in English is this, for T is that, and for A is, is this. These are some numbers. I should have used perhaps other letters not to make any connections that aren't there. So there is such a table for English, there is such a table for French, etc. This information has been collected, analyzed, and distilled into tables. 
Now imagine that you are looking at a string that begins with uh, okay let's say you have a long piece of text that you know has been encrypted with a shift cipher you don't know what the secret key is in this case it was three in another case it could be another number uh, but you know it's a shift cipher what things will you notice when you look at that text carefully and you do some counting? Uh, okay, so you will notice that some characters can be met with a certain frequency. And if you find the most frequently used symbol in this piece of text, and you have reasons to believe that this text is in English, then what can you conclude, Georgi? Well, then we know that the most frequent character would either be originally either E, T, or A. So if we just match it, we would see uh, what the step is from our original E to the mm -hmm. new character, which is encoded in. And then we can uh -huh. actually think the code back, the direct see if we get a So, um, Let's take this example that was already there. E is mapped to H. So if this piece of text is in English and you run a statistical analysis on it, you will see that H is the most commonly used letter. Knowing that this text is in English, you can say, aha, then E was mapped to H. You can then double check that, but by looking for the second most common character, which should be mapped to T uh, here in this gap. But this is not like purely correct. Why not? Because you see, maybe intentionally the text was written only with some letter to confuse you, or maybe mm. like just That's why you need to check multiple characters. That's one thing. Second, I must tell you that there are some people who really play tricks on you. For example, there is one French author who wrote a 300-page book which doesn't use the letter E, just because we can. And this work has been translated to other languages where they similarly implied, I mean, imposed a constraint such as this one. Let's write a book without using one letter. And it's readable, it's human language, it works. Um, so if you are dealing with such a text which was specifically crafted to, to mess with these tables, you will of course have a hard time. But, because we're learning and we start with simple things, we will assume that we are dealing with English text that was not written with any cleverly chosen constraints that would trip your algorithms. So your challenge for the next assignment is to implement a tool that can break a shift cipher using several methods. One of them is to do this via frequency analysis. You will have to build a frequency table for each symbol found in the given text. You would have to compare it with what you know about the letter distribution in English. And based on this, you should tell me something like, the secret key is this, the output is this, so the original encrypted text. The second method is to use a dictionary attack. How would you implement that? Knowing that this text is in English. We can shift each letter. Can we find the words that are in the dictionary? Well, let's take it one step at a time. 
you asked. Yeah, what is dictionary? What is a dictionary attack? Uh, you weren't here in the previous semester when we had this password cracking challenge, so I will explain it briefly. Um, when you have to guess someone's password, you could do several things. Uh, you could do some research about this person. For example, um, usually, you know, parents use the birth date of their children as a PIN code or the names of their children as a password. So you do some research about this person whose account you want to break, and then you build a list of strings like family names, where I was born, uh, which school I went to, etc. And then you make a list of passwords to try. If it works, great. If it doesn't, uh, you can always take the first, let's say, top 20 most used passwords, which are you know, published, available in lists, Besides that, you can do ah, you can do a dictionary attack, which is basically making the assumption that the word, the password the person uses is a word. So let's run a short survey. Who uses a word for one of their passwords, at least for one account? Yeah, a, a real word that is a, an actual word from a language. With no numbers? No numbers, just a word. Oh. So one, two, three, four, five. Five people out of how many we are here. So let's say around 15%. So um, it's much easier to try all the words in a dictionary than the last item here in this list, which is brute force which is basically trying all possible combinations of symbols, beginning with, let's say, A, 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 and ending with Z, 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 Z. And then you change one character at a time. So there are many, many options to choose from. If this password is 10 characters long, and let's say they only use small letters, so there are 26 letters in the alphabet, and you have a length of 10, that's the number of options you have to try. Whereas the number of words in a dictionary probably is a smaller number. But we could do the math to really double check that. So this is what a dictionary attack is. But in this case, a dictionary attack is, it is taken with a slight twist. You basically, um, try every possible shift, then you check how the new string looks like. You try to break it into words and see if those words can be found in a dictionary. And if they can be found in a dictionary, then you are most likely looking at proper human readable text. The advantage of this method is that you can use a lot of dictionaries. And even if you don't know which language the original text is written in, so you don't really know which distribution table to apply, but if you have multiple dictionaries from all the languages, just use the most common word. For example, in English, this would be maybe the. Uh, in another language, it could be some other thing. Let's say in Romanian, perhaps it's she. I don't know, but maybe it is. So you, you make a shift, you, you compare, you try to see if those words really are actual words. If they are, you can stop your algorithm and say, uh, this is the decrypted text. And so basically, that's it. So your mission is to mostly concentrate on this frequency analysis. Um, another thing you should know is there is a thing called ROT13, which is a, 
a thing you can do with, with the standard English alphabet, which has 26 letters. And it has this interesting property that uh, if you cut this in half, you get 13. So if you have a text and you shift it to the right 13 times, you encrypt it. And if you shift it again 13 times, you actually go all the way back to the original. And there is this joke that some people who are really interested in security, when you ask them uh, which encryption algorithm they use to store their notes, they say, I use uh, double rod 13 to make it twice as secure as just rod 13. And it gives you the same thing. What are your questions uh, for now? So you basically shift it once. Yeah. You try to break it, the form string into words. And then you look up that word in the dictionary. If it's there, it's there. And you know what it is. If it's not, try another shift. Yeah? Shift cipher or also substitution? Uh huh. Okay, so uh, the shift cipher is an example of a substitution cipher where basically you take one character and you substitute it with another character. But there are other flavors of substitution ciphers where, for example, the first sentence can use one shift. The second sentence can use another shift value. Or you could try something else. Uh, you could represent this alphabet as a, as a grid. And you can use different shifts for different characters. So for example, if you are in this level, you shift two times. If you are here, you shift three times. Or you can shift by columns. So A, D, G will be shifted um, three times. H will be shifted to the other direction. B, E, and H will be shifted to the other direction three times. Or this could be a different number. So uh, with frequency analysis, you will definitely kick the ass of a shift cipher. But when you take something which is more clever, then you will have a hard time. Well, of course, it's still crackable, but not using such a simple trick. Uh, another thing you might need to know is that in Python, you could take any string, for example, test, and then do this in code. And you can encode it in different ways. For example, you can uh, do that, or you can encode it into base64. One other argument that it supports is rod13. And these have to be passed as strings. So if you take a string, you do encode it into rod13, it will do this for you. And of course, you can give it, uh, you can move it back to its original state by applying the same transformation one more time. However, if you want to rotate it, uh, not by 13 positions, but by another number of positions, you would have to invent something else. Uh, another thing you have to keep in mind is that in an ASCII table, you have more than 26 characters. So there is, a more, there is more room for different types of shifts. Another thing I have to ask you is about equivalence. If I shift something 26 times, what do I get? I get the same thing. And if I shift something 52 times, so, in this case, what can we determine from this? 
The number of possible cases. So even though there is no force in the universe that prevents me from applying the shift cipher a billion times or a billion, billion, billion times, it is sufficient for me to check just this many uh, shift options. One of them ought to be the right one in an alphabet that has 26 characters. If it has more characters, then there is, of course, more stuff to try. But it's, it still is a finite number, not a billion, 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 billion. Uh, by the way, do you know about Carl Sagan? About what? Carl Sagan. There is this very special person, or there was uh, this uh, very special person who, among other things, made a series of documentaries called Cosmos a while ago. And when he was talking about the grand scale of the universe, he would often say a billion, 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 billion stars. So there is this special unit of measurement called a Sagan. So how far away is that? It's just three Sagans away. It means three billions, billions, billions. <laughs> so even if I, I shifted it by three Sagans, there is no point to go any point beyond 26 or whatever the length of the ASCII table is. What other questions do you have? I guess. We should use only one algorithm, right? Uh, no, implement both. <laughs> it's not difficult. I mean, it's not rocket science. No, the idea, will you get the code to break or will you create by algorithms? You can invent your own. But it's like? More work to do? No, it's not work to do, but how can I break my own code? You can ask your best friend to generate a cryptogram for you. A cryptogram is encrypted text. And then see what it is. How, um, how difficult it should be? Because it's like you can, like, like chip, you can do for every three character round shift, and you can do the. Uh -huh. Got it. We'll be using a standard shift cipher without any kind of magic, like this. Oh, okay. So I emphasize that in this case, the point of the exercise is to tinker with frequency analysis. It's not to implement a shift cipher. Implementing a shift cipher is not difficult, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be using it for anything serious. So the point is to play with this. What other questions do you have? Well, then, good luck. Oh, wait, one question. Mm -hmm. The word uh, will have only three different states. You mean, you said web? Web, uh, it doesn't matter. So uh -huh. we can shift only um, in a circle way this word, and we will get like E W E or E B W and stuff like that. Uh -huh. yeah. So this will be a way to implement shift cipher. Or we can uh, define a number of shifts, uh, so uh, every letter will be shifted according to the... Uh, to a predefined... Yeah, uh -huh. so it will go to, So there are different kinds of uh, okay. shift ciphers. I got it. So that. we'll be shifting the whole input. Not each word individually. In a circle-like way? No, no, no. Yeah. So, so in, in that each word. I mean, uh, it's yeah. key for the... Well, like it was described here by somebody else. Yeah. Well, if there are no questions, then let's let's resume whatever we were doing, and good luck. Uh, the requirements will be or are on the wiki, but I will review them just in case.